the mating surface is perfectly clean, perfectly clean. I also cleaned out the inside of all the soot that I could. I'll go ahead and slide this into place here. Okay, we had our four bolts there. We got them right back in place here. One there, one in the back corner, and then the two, one on each side of this sensor, this temperature sensor. We're torquing them to 18 foot pounds. And that's 18 foot pounds right there. Okay, and because this new grid heater delete plate doesn't have the standoffs, um, they send these spacers. These are also torqued to 18 foot pounds. Okay, so these are the parts that you want to clean the paint off so the bolt grounds well. And so I just use this carbide burr, worked it around in there. And you can see the metal shavings coming off. So it does the business. You got to be careful because it'll definitely cut a hole in the metal. I'm trying to keep it as flat as possible though. So I did three of them. Hopefully that's enough to keep it grounded. Alright, now let's get this on here. Let's see. Okay. That's that part. Got these little holes in. I'm not running methanol or anything like that. So I'm gonna take the mass airflow sensor off here. Okay. Now that is a little dirty. I have some mass airflow sensor cleaner. I'm just gonna spray on it. They really make that stuff. I'm no expert. Um, I do understand a little bit about laminar flow, but from what I've understood also from people that report after installing these, basically the EGT is lower. At cruise speed, towing, climbing a hill, um, it cools down faster. And that's one of the things I'm really after is trying to get it, my EGT to cool down faster when I do stop. So if this is gonna help that, that's awesome. If it also keeps the bolt from falling in, you know, that's really the primary reason I'm doing this, but so about six inches wide there. Shouldn't be about the same here, a little over six inches, but this difference is two and three quarter, whereas that's what, one and a half or so. So that's a big, big volume difference there. Now this is gonna disturb laminar flow right here, but maybe the extra volume will make up for it. Okay, I just can't get to this bolt right down there without taking that off. We're gonna take that off and now hopefully we can get on this bolt here. There we go. So Glacier sends an extra bolt uh, and then you use the old one and they're the exact same bolt basically. So one goes here, one goes here. And it's a good idea to leave this whole thing loose until you get them all kind of threaded up just to make sure they all line up. Now the most important part of this whole project. All right, 
pretty clean installation. Let's see if it runs. Okay, let's just take a baseline temperature here. Well, it's definitely cooling off faster, but you know, the engine's not warm either. There's no heat in the block, so um, we'll have to see how it does. Let's do some testing. Seems to run okay. I didn't hear any vacuum leaks. I need to check for fuel leaks and just make sure with the mirror, shine a light down there, and just look underneath all the injectors and underneath the, uh, uh, the rail there, make sure there's no fuel leaking around anywhere. Haven't seen any codes yet, so hopefully I won't see any. And um, yeah, I'm excited. My engine is safe again. Okay, we've got about 350, 400 miles on it now. Just want to check for leaks and looking for fuel streaks. Um, anything that looks like fuel's leaking, I don't see anything up here. I want to feel below the CP3 there to make sure that the pump's not leaking where I can't really see down there. Now we're going to test this thing. We're going to put the digital amp meter on it, the DC amp meter on the cable and see how many amps it's pulling when we turn the key on. Okay, let's see if this thing's pulling the amps it should. And we'll turn our DC amp meter on to 600. Okay, it seems to be working. It's pulling over 200 amps. That means it's grounded well. And I think that would just be a periodic check I do maybe, I don't know, once every six months or a year just to make sure that my ground doesn't go bad or that the solenoid didn't go bad. You can hear the solenoid clicking on and clicking off, but that can go bad as well. And there's the solenoid right there. Those are wires that can get dirty too and uh, get corroded. So we'll just make sure those are clean as well. Okay guys, I wanna see what the temperature of the grid actually gets to. And I'm just curious about this. So we already know that it gets the correct amount of amps coming um, in, but let's just see what the temperature of the grid is. So I'm gonna shine the laser thermometer down inside here. Let's see what it is. Okay, it's saying 47 degrees. So that's a good baseline. And uh, so all I did was, of course, the hot wire is still hooked up down here, but I just ran a, stole a wire from one of the winches, um, grounded it here and grounded it here to the body. And so this should give us a good ground. This little piece of metal here is just keeping it separated so I can get the laser thermometer down there. Let's turn the key on and see what it looks like. Okay, it's cycling right now. Ooh, look at the steam. That's 268 degrees, it just clicked off. 395 degrees. 406. 350, so it is cooling off just because it's radiating out to the atmosphere, 340. Okay, so 400 degrees. That answers my question. It's working. GDP, thanks for a great product.